Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here with some important and exciting news. K-State has added another player to their basketball team. They are searching all over the place, trying to find uh, guys to fill out this roster, but not just guys to take scholarships, guys that can actually help you win games. And I believe they found somebody that can do that. And this is the type of player that I think K-State probably needs to put a little bit more focus on earlier in the transfer portal process so you don't have people panicked on May 9th or May 10th or May 11th, however late into May you go with this, because Max Jones is a really good player you're getting from Cal State Fullerton. A little bit of a hired gun, just one year of eligibility left to play, but this is a guy that he can score the basketball to the tune of 15 points. He shot it well from three throughout his college career, uh, including the last two seasons in the Big West at Cal State Fullerton. And uh, I know that you've done some digging into his game here, Drew, but he had some he had power five interest at this level. And in addition to that, he performed well against teams that played in the NCAA tournament this past year. Yeah, Max Jones is an exciting player to me and a really intriguing player as well because there's some parts of his game where I'm like, okay, this is like really elite. And then there's some portions of his game where I'm really – confused about and really kind of interested to watch some Cal State Fullerton games uh, if I can find any because good lord finding finding stuff for from small schools for any transfer is well, such a mess. Believe it or not and I'll let you get into it here but I, I here is video from Max Jones against Nebraska <laughs> this year where he had a, a really nice game on the road in Lincoln against a team that we know made the NCAA tournament and also embarrassed K-State Manhattan this year. Yeah, he gave Nebraska a fits. He scored 30 against Nebraska. Cal State Fullerton, you know, the, the schedule isn't great that they usually play, but somehow in the non-conference, they ended up playing three uh, NCAA tournament teams and then a fourth with Long Beach State in conference play. And in those four games, it is a small sample size, but he averaged 19.75 points per game in those games and shot 40% from the floor and 50% from three. So that, that portion of his game is really, really exciting to me. The the portion of his game where I'm a little, I don't want to say confused or afraid about, is he does struggle to score at the rim. And I'm really intrigued by that because he's a bigger guard. He's 6'5", 200 pounds, has a really high foul rate. So I'm interested to see kind of what goes around or what goes along at the rim. Is it like something with his balance? Is it? him kind of just hunting contact and then missing the shots because of that when he doesn't draw the foul. But he's a really intriguing player because he doesn't get to the, the free throw line quite like Khalif Battle did, but he gets to the free throw line at a pretty high clip and it is really efficient when, well, once he gets there. And as another guy that would come in, and I know that you're going to say this, so I'm stealing it from you, he would be the best shooter on K-State's roster last season. Great, great point because he's another guy that fits that bill. Uh, last year, he was at 38.5%. He was at 39.5% the season before that. And yeah, this past year, I mean, he he averaged over six free throw attempts a game. So, it, you know, if you're not finishing at the rim, at least make sure that if you're going there, you're getting to the line and he's doing that. So that that's all a positive. I mean, this is not a guy that he's not going to come in and run the offense for K-State. He's not going to come in or be the main scorer uh, and, and how they would approach things. I mean, he had a negative assist to turnover ratio last year. That was 1.9 to 2.9, so not the best, but you have to take in some different factors there. Number one, he would have a much different role on this K-State team that would figure to be better than what he played at at Cal State Fullerton. And then in addition to that, like you play with better guys and you're going to have the ball a little bit less. You're going to be asked to do a little bit less. And when you are trying to get to the ball, the ball of those guys, you may lead to less turnovers that way. So if you want to have any concern here, it would be that turnover number. It was near three a game. Yes. Um, but I'm sure, you know, if you do a little bit more digging there, it, you can probably find a way to get past that. And with the scoring that he brings, you you can sacrifice that. And you could see that game against Nebraska. This is not just like, yeah, we're bringing in a guy up a level. He, you know, might do some things. He can get his own shot against good competition. And we know, you know, Nebraska was pretty – pretty stout at times this year yeah i do have some degenerates who have watched a little bit of cal state fullerton and they said that uh he was their lead guard this season and he 
probably wasn't suited for that role. So I think that a little bit of the turnover inflation is kind of like what we saw at K State with Cam Carter, where he probably wasn't adapt to being one of the primary ball handlers. So I, I think that you can kind of take that turnover number with a little bit of a grain of salt because he had a 32% usage rate at Cal State Fullerton. He probably won't be near that number at K-State. I would imagine that it would drop pretty pretty significantly because he can play a little bit more off the ball. And I saw some people on the board kind of say, isn't this kind of redundant with uh, Brennan Housen coming in? But no, no. Max Jones and Brennan Housen, two completely different players. Brennan Housen lives on the perimeter, and because of that, doesn't draw very many fouls. Uh, Brennan Housen, though, does have a 100% uh, free or field goal percentage at the rim on three of three, but he's totally different than Max Jones because Max Jones can shoot the three and can also get to the rim, get fouled. So he's kind of the more complete player of Brennan Housen, and I think that those two can also complement each other because Jones has shown the ability to be able to drive in and get to the rim. He has pretty decent assist numbers uh, from two seasons or from last season where he wasn't the primary ball handler. Uh, but this season, the assist numbers kind of dropped and that the turnovers got a little bit higher. So I, I'm interested to see what he kind of fits and what role he fits. And the other interesting thing to me, uh, and I know that we'll kind of get in on get into the weeds with him on this too, his steal rate is insanely high so i'm interested to kind of see where he goes from there on defense because he can probably probably be a very good defender at this level because he had four steals against nebraska and that's nothing to really sneeze about yeah and you know you talk about hey the him being the the primary guard this season compared to the season prior this year they were 14 and 18 at cal state fullerton the year before that they were 20 and 13 they finished 12 and 6 in the big west so the guy, the talent around him also changed from the year prior, where you know they finished just a couple games out of you know winning the Big West the season ago. Different set of circumstances there. I think that with the right set of guys, the efficiency will be at a level that you can live with, and the ability to create his own shot, like we saw in that game against Nebraska, is also uh, something that changes what he does compared to Brendan Housen, where. You know, we talked, we've talked a lot about Brennan Housen and how he can shoot the ball, and rightfully so. I think that there is a scenario in which that with the team that is around Brennan Housen this year, that his shooting numbers, which have been really good over his first two seasons at Villanova, uh, right near 40%, I think he could be 40% or better this season at K-State. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Housen ends up being around 40% because you have guys like C.J. Jones, Max Jones, and Doug McDaniel who can really break guys down off the dribble and can kick it out to somebody like Housen and knock down some threes. Uh, the other thing that I'll point out with Max Jones is that he is a bigger player at the guard position because you had Doug McDaniel at 5'11", but Max Jones, 6'5", 200 pounds. He's a big dude. So I think that that will help him in the Big 12 because he won't need to put on like a ton of weight to really get acclimated to the beating that guys that like to take it to the rim take in this league. Like you kind of saw that with Tyler Perry, how he got beat up a lot was because he was just on the smaller side, height and weight wise. But Max Jones, I don't think that will have that problem. But I mean, he, Jones lives at the free throw line. Uh, there's just no other real way to point it out besides that. Three games with double digit free throw attempts. And I believe that he had at least eight and seven or eight games. So he can get to the line. He's efficient when he gets to the line. And he's a good fit for what K-State wants to do. And like you said, this is probably somebody that you would have wanted a little bit earlier in the process because people are probably more excited and because people are really reactive to what they see. And so like losing Khalif Battle and then getting Max Jones, I think that makes people kind of hesitant of like, was this like a backup plan? What we don't think that he like people will probably say that they don't think that he's going to be as good as Khalif Battle, but I think that Jones, you can expect him to be a good scorer. He'll get to the rim, he can get some rebounds, and he's a he looks to be a good defender. Yeah, I, I and I think that the way things are, are going to go, we know last year K State defended at a really well, a uh, really high level. It didn't mean anything because they couldn't play offense. As we see, they've added guys that I think can play offense. And I think 
all can be guys that can carry the load and the traits that they have that would lead to them needing to carry you on offense. They're a little bit more translatable and things that can really help because last year, yes, there were moments where Tyler Perry could take over a game, Cam Carter, Arthur Kaluma, but the shooting was not there for any of those guys last year. Now, I will always tell people that, and I'm probably a big Tyler Perry defender out there, and people probably hate it, but if on a different team or had, you know, things gone differently, Tyler Perry probably shoots it better. It's not the way it goes. Uh, but Cam Carter is not a consistent enough three point shooter. Arthur Kaluma, it's just, you know, he, he's good for his size and, and what he does, but, you know, he, he tapered off pretty hard last year. Now you've got a handful of guys that, you know, even if they can't get to the rim or get easy buckets, they can create for, for for themselves, and they've proven that in difficult circumstances, they can still shoot it well from three. That's kind of the thing for Doug McDaniel, certainly the thing for Max Jones. Like you got to imagine playing on a 14 and 18 team this year in the Big West. They probably went into every game, and the opponent said, All right, there's really one guy we got to focus on here, and that's Max Jones. And if you do that, then you probably put yourself in a pretty decent spot. So I think that's something that is helpful is that you have players that are probably a little bit more replicable in what they could do to carry you on offense. Max Jones was the second leading scorer on Cal State Fullerton this year. Uh, the other leading scorer, 17 points a game from a DJ Bruton, uh, but he didn't shoot it as well. So Max Jones was the best shooter on the roster last year for Cal State Fullerton of the guys that played uh, more than 15 minutes a game. So significant to, to say the least. The last thing that I'll add, and this kind of goes to what we were talking about with roster construction and how Cal State Fullerton probably didn't have the best roster out there. Like, just going to be honest, uh, I, I'm pretty sure their lead guard from the 2022 season ended up at Alabama and playing a little bit for the Crimson Tide this season. But the better Cal State Fullerton team in 2022, uh, Max Jones' offensive rating was 109.9, which is a very, very good offensive rating. This year as the lead guard, kind of playing the Cam Carter role where he probably isn't apt to being the primary ball handler 90% of the time that he's on the floor, it dropped to 101.2. If he can find a way to be at that 109 again, K-State's in a really good spot with him. Yeah, that's good news. All right, well, that's the book on Max Jones, the latest member of K-State's basketball team. Now four open scholarships to work with. You see there, the one thing they still need is a guy with some size that can come in and you can guarantee is going to play immediately and give you some help. It's clear that K-State is still looking for it, and uh, they've made at least one move here with Max Jones, who certainly helps the profile of their offense. And a, a good guard that, honestly, I, you mentioned the defense. I think that there are some elements there that the defense can, can kind of shine through at times and uh, probably – he brings some stuff along the lines of what Desi did, just better offensively than Desi. I think anytime you got something from Desi offensively, you're like, ah, I'll take that. Like the the 24 against KU in Manhattan, uh, you'll you'll take that in any day. And you mentioned uh, in the story that'll be up on KSO some of the the suitors that were there. It, it's not just you know other Cal State Fullerton adjacent. K State still this late in the game was battling the likes of SEC and Big 12 and ACC foes for a player like Max Jones. Yeah, and I think that that makes it kind of an under-the-radar kind of big-time recruiting win, kind of like C.J. Jones. So maybe it's just a Jones thing where the, the best recruiting wins that are under the radar, just everybody needs to be named Jones. Yeah, well, if you get a team full of Joneses, everybody has to try and keep up with you, so... It's probably not a, a bad thing. All right. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. That's going to do it for us. If you want more on the Max Jones edition and everything else going on with K-State football and basketball, head over to K-State Online, add on three, and also stay right here. Check out all the videos we have for you on the YouTube page as well. So Max Jones is a cat bringing 15 points per game and almost a 40% shooting percentage uh, from deep to Manhattan next season to help try and get the cats back to the NCAA tournament.